Hi everyone! This week you read an academic article about how users of online forums construct their identities in the forums and how they gain and assert their agency in those forums. I really like this piece in part because it's about the messy creative ways people write when they communicate online, but also partly because like the fourth sentence is literally, I love chickens, woot, and it just, it always makes me smile. So this article is written by Jeff Grable and Stacy Pegg about how people create their identities through their writing and assert their agency, again through their writing, in those public forums online. Those two researchers are really interested in something called embodiment, which has to do with how we write and talk about our bodies, about our lived experiences within our bodies, kind of how we try to make room or space for our bodies in cyberspace, which isn't really a material place. And so we have to make, make that room or take up that space by using writing. There are other ways to use the concept of embodiment, but they're not really present in this article. So, At any rate, Grable and Pig talk about people writing their way into a conversation. To investigate how people sort of make space for themselves in cyberspace, specifically in public forums, they analyzed several forums on Science Buzz, the forum hub for the Minnesota Science Museum in St. Paul, Minnesota. In this article, though they lead with that I love chickens woot bit, <laughs> they mo mostly focus on forum threads discussing the vaccine for the human papillomavirus, or HPV. This was a vaccine that was still kind of new at the time of writing, and frankly, it's still kind of new in terms of vaccines. Uh, so let's turn to question one. What do Grable and Pig say about how users construct their identities in online forums? So essentially in this space where you can be kind of an, an, as anonymous bleh, as you want, users have to disclose information about themselves. They have to perform their identities from the offline world in the online world in order to construct that identity. In one thread about the HPV vaccine, several posts sort of begin with posters identifying themselves as moms who are trying to make a decision about whether they want to have their kids vaccinated for HPV. Just for reference, I think the possible age range for effective administration of the vaccine is something like 13 to 26 years old, maybe even younger than 13, I'm not really sure. But anyway, these moms are concerned with getting their kids vaccinated. Then, later in the conversation, several posters pipe up and identify as young women or young adolescents trying to learn more about the vaccine so that they themselves can make a decision on whether or not they want to get it. Even further down the line, a few posters identify themselves as actually having HPV. And around this time in the conversation, posters start ending their posts by actually stating their age, signing their post by saying age 15 or age 18 and so on and so forth. And I'm actually going to pivot to question two here because those strategies by the posters have a lot to do with question two. How did the users gain agency in the forums? Well, by disclosing this information about themselves. They're essentially asserting themselves as authorities in the conversation about these particular experiences. As Grable and Pig write, the conversation turns from being about young women to a conversation by young women. And I do want to pause here to note that yes, HPV can be contracted and passed on by all sexes and genders, but it seems much of the conversation in this thread in particular was about the specific dangers of HPV for people for whom cervical cancer is a risk because HPV can often lead to cervical cancer, so especially if it's untreated. So the posters in the forum make space for themselves, gain agency in a sense, both by disclosing this information, what Grable and Pig call identity performances, and by asking questions. Both of these strategies then call other users to respond and continue the conversation in various ways. All right, so there are a lot of other cool things in this article that you could have talked about as well in your reading responses, but that was kind of the gist of it. I hope you enjoyed reading it. One thing to keep in mind about this piece as we're moving forward in the video essay project and eventually the ePortfolio project at the end of this semester is that the same thing kind of applies in those two projects. In order to create your identity in the video or in the ePortfolio, you have to write or create your way into an identity. You will select different things to include in each piece of media images, sounds, the background for your video, if you choose to appear on camera, how you choose to present yourself, and so on and so forth. You select all of these things 
in these different modes in order to craft an identity for yourself in that piece of media. All right, that's it for now though. As always, please don't hesitate to ask if you have any questions.